I want you to think of an ADV bike and its rider. What are you picturing? If you're like me, it's probably a giant bike being ridden by a beef jerky of a human being, silver-haired retiree. Adventure bikes are too big, you're too short for them, they're for old guys, they're lame. This is my internal monologue when Harley Davidson invited us out to the Mojave to check out the new Pan America. My concerns were met and squashed once I got out there and on the bike. There's 10 YouTubers, we're in the middle of the desert, it was late nights, dropped bikes, big personalities, big motorcycle, and not a soul for miles. What could have possibly gone wrong? All right, story time, and I'll keep it brief. About 20 years ago, for a few years, me and my buddies used to ride dirt bikes around our little town out in West Georgia. The bikes got stolen at, at some point when I was 18, uh, so that was the end of it. We fast forward a little bit, this year in fact, get an email from Harley asking if we wanted to go to Sturgis to check out the new Pan America, Harley's first real entry into the ADV market. I don't really count the Buell Ulysses. None of the guys were able to go, so I snuck up to one of our local HD dealers, threw a leg over a showroom Pan Am. I didn't feel really confident about it, uh, and taking it anywhere off-road seemed irresponsible, so I passed. About a month ago, we get a follow-up. This time, they sweeten the pot. This would take place at the Zakhar Overland Park in the Mojave Desert, the same place that their dealer networks have been sending all their guys to train on this bike, and it would include a full day of training. All right, sign me up. Aside from the skill, though, there was one major thing I was lacking, and that is gear. Much to my wife's dismay, I'm not really a all the gear all the time kind of rider. I'm a t-shirt, helmet, and gloves kind of rider. So we reached out to Revzilla, and they pointed me in the right direction. Full set of ADV gear, head to toe. I'll have links to all of the gear that I use in the description, but if you get one thing, it is the Klein Knack Pack. This thing came in super clutch. The hydration pack especially uh, saved my bacon out in the desert sun. Uh, properly geared, I'm off. We land at LAX. Uh, it's my first time out in California since I was like 19. Uh, so I was super excited. We shuttled out to the Hilton where we meet up with everyone, had a few beers. Then it's a two hour ride out to the car. We arrive, we drop our bags off and we stretch our legs a little bit. Made a couple of stops along the way. Uh, we started out, like always at these events, with a dinner and a walkthrough of the bike. I'll touch on a few of the key features that got me excited, but we have a second video coming out of this weekend where I will dive into a lot more detail on the bike and its performance. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can catch that video when it comes out. The first standout feature was the electronic suites. Harley is not super known for including some of this stuff, so it was a huge standout for me. Five rider modes, ABS, traction control, both with lean sensitive settings, semi-active suspension, and the most important to me, automatic ride height. Completely configurable and able to be shut off. It allows the bike to automatically take out preload when you come to a stop. I believe the default setting is like 15 miles and under. When you're coming to a stop, it progressively lowers the bike by about two inches. Uh, this was great when we were stopped or getting on the bike. Uh, I found it easy to mount up like you're on a horse and then flip the power on and then it would drop it down two inches allowing me to get more purchase. Before we get into the meat of this video, I just wanna echo something uh, our buddy Brandon Picasso said several times during this trip and in his video. This was the toughest thing that I've ever had to do on a motorcycle, full stop. My limits were constantly tested. Okay, on to the actual training. The instructors, all amazing and very patient and encouraging guys. Watch us through quite a few drills, but I'll touch on the ones that are most impactful. So for this, I'm gonna bring Chase in, cause I've- I like to talk. <laughs> I've watched hours and hours of him riding. I consider you a pretty competent street rider. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. So what I wanna do is kind of set the- <laughs> Don't read the comments. <laughs> Don't read the comments. So what I wanna do is I wanna set this kind of idea so that you can have this contrast. Let's say you're in the mountains. <sighs> okay. 
Yeah, I'm very happy about it. You got a straightaway. Okay. Big right, big left. Okay. Walk through, prepping up to the turn, surface level. Okay. Just Not the too idea. Serious. Okay. You're going into the turn straight away, big right hand. Then a left right afterwards. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Going down the straight. Uh, I know the right hand's coming up, so I'm going to get in the left side of the lane. I'm going to slow down, get my entry speed right. I'm going to get all my body weight on the right side of the bike. So then I'm coming up to the turn. I'm going to just full faith, trust, fall into the turn, let my body weight pull the bike through. Once I get to the apex, I'm like, oh, snap, that left's coming up. So then I'm going to go <laughs> pull the bike back up, shift all the weight over fall into lefty and boo like this. Whee! So the important part there is, and thank you, Chase. Thank you. You're welcome. Demonstrating the idea uh, that was in my head the entire time, which was when I'm on a street, I'm using my body weight to aid in the turn. It, the important part that you brought up was putting your weight on the inside of the turn. That's important to remember. The first lesson was about counterweighting. The idea of leaning your body away from the turn to keep your weight on the contact patch is so completely foreign. It wasn't until probably about halfway through the second day that I idea became easier to execute. Everything in my body was defaulting to street skills. All of motorcycling is about maximizing traction, but on dirt, the method changes and the idea of becoming comfortable in low traction environments comes into play. Letting the bike track pretty much wherever it was comfortable and using those counterweighting skills was a whole different world. Of riding. Looking back at the footage, watching the back end of that bike just skate around, I'm still amazed at the physics of bikes in action. Every stretch of dirt road, that bike was kind of just floating. Though it never felt out of control, it was a super cool feeling. The drill that stuck with me the most was braking. We did four exercises. First, rear brake in off-road plus, which disables the rear ABS, the linked braking, and set the bike to the most limited rear traction control. That wasn't too bad, as we play that game a lot with the little Venom bikes that we have in the shop, letting the rear end lock up and skid all over the place. Next, we did the same rear braking, but in standard off-road. This enabled all the rider aids. Really get to feel the ABS working on this one. Uh, it was, again, not a big deal. The third, was the front brake. This is the drill I was most anxious about. The idea of ham fisting the front brake on dirt seemed to go against everything I thought I knew about riding in the dirt, but after running up to 30 miles an hour and squeezing the living shit out of the front brake lever, this ended up being the least sketchy feeling maneuver. The last exercise was full stop emergency braking front and rear. Nothing crazy here, though I was pretty shocked at how quickly this bike came to a stop on the sand and dirt. And it is a 560 pound big ADV bike. The only braking exercise I really struggled with was the declined braking later on that day. Maybe I was just carrying too much momentum or struggling with the weight or like the body position and never really get the handle of it. Though I did manage to stay on the bike, so at least there's that. I was in a lot of pain. I was tired, hot, ready to shower and eat and sleep. But by the end of it, my biggest takeaway from the training was this. Going through this grueling process, which a bunch of friends was, and I'm being absolutely dead serious, a life-changing experience. Every drop, every tip over, every slip and fall made every win that much more impactful. We were all learning and growing together, high-fiving, just going through the whole process together. Not only were the instructors the most encouraging and patient people we could have ever asked for, but the entire group were the best cheerleaders and hype squad I could ever have wanted. I already think very highly of these content creators. The ones I have met, the new friends that I've made, but this experience put a bow on it. I'll leave a link to everyone's channel because I cannot wait to see the experience from their perspective. Uh, some of them already released videos and I, I just can't stop watching it and thinking, I wanna be back out there right now. All things considered, I think the team at Zakar and Harley succeeded in their mission, which was to get us interested in ADV riding and see that these big bikes off-road aren't as scary as you would think. As a short rider, I constantly second guess myself when I approach a new machine or style of riding. Not only did this training completely kill that trepidation I had, but it opened up a whole new world of riding that I do not want to stop exploring. It was an amazing time. I can't say enough thanks to the team at Zakar. Uh, a big thank you to Harley, specifically Matt, who was out there riding with us for bringing us out there, and Revzilla for gearing me up because otherwise, I'd just be wearing this. It was such an amazing experience. I wanna do more of it. The way that you guys can help us is if you like this, if you enjoyed this video, 
you share it with a friend that's on the fence about a new style of riding. You might be scared to get on an ADV bike. These are big bikes. There was a lot of opportunities for growth uh, that I would have been normally too scared. So again, huge thank you to all the people that were involved. Uh, we love bringing you along for the events like this. Uh, if you have any questions about the training itself and that whole experience, just put them in the comments. Uh, I'll go through it and uh, we'll have a conversation about it. This isn't the end though. We got a part two where we take these new skills that we just learned and we take them out about 200 mile trip out in the middle of the desert in one of the most epic rides I've ever been on, on one of the coolest bikes I've ridden all year. All right, outro crew, what are some of your favorite off the beaten path roads where you are? I'm like, I'm just making a to-do list at this point. As soon as I get my hands on another ADV bike, I'm putting miles on it, like miles and miles. Uh, don't forget to put OC in your comments so we know who to give our extra love to. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bo, out.